Where have you been? I'm an hour late, Spence, my other job. Well, who told you to wait? Why didn't you just go? And leave your grandma alone, huh? Your mama would have my head. Well, I'm here now, so you can go. Oh, you're in a charming mood. What's the matter, sugar? Nothing. Well, I've got no time to probe. Another thing, Spence, your room, it's a mess. I know I'm paid to clean it, but that's a federal works project. <laughs> Very funny. Well, what's the matter, sugar? Have a fight with your girlfriend? And you know, damn well, I got no girlfriend, Christine. I know, and that's what surprises me. A charming, good-looking boy like you, and such a lovely disposition. Look, why don't you do me a favor, huh? Uh-huh. Why don't you just drop dead? <laughs> you know, Spence, I'd do anything in the world for you, and I'll give your suggestion a lot of thought. Well, so long, sugar. Whatever it is, I sure hope you feel better tomorrow. Is that no good broom push out of sight? Hey, Graham. You know you've got no business coming downstairs. Mom told you to stay up here. Not only am I going to tell her, but when the doctor comes, I'm going to tell him, too. If you do, I'll tell your mother that you was late coming home from school and that you haven't practiced yet. Look, you better put all your concentration on getting down these steps or you're going to fall and break your behind. No, you stop that kind of language. You hear me? I never thought I'd live to see the day that my own daughter's child was cursing like a trooper. I haven't said anything yet, Grim. All I said was if you weren't careful, you were going to fall and break your behind. And you will, too. Take your hands off me. I can do the rest myself. Well, do it, then. What are you doing with that old dirty thing in the house? What's wrong with you? Nothing. Well, you act like there's something wrong. Come on over and talk to me. Oh, talk to yourself. You've been doing it for years. You're a mean little beggar. Yeah, I know it. What is the matter with you? Well, I guess I might as well tell you. It's probably all over town anyway. Look, Graham, what could you possibly imagine as being about the worst thing that could happen to me? You haven't got any little girls in trouble, have you? Oh, nothing like that, Graham. It's worse. What have you done? Well, I just went and got my behind kicked out of school, that's what. Spencer Scott, what were you doing? Nothing much, just smoking in a jar. Smoking where? In a jar in the can in the men's room, Graham. What were you smoking? A cigar. A cigar. Cigarettes are not dirty enough, I suppose. You've got to start smoking cigars. Will you stop hitting yourself with that thing? Will you leave me alone? Look, don't you understand that when a guy's upset, he's got to hit himself with something, Graham. You just got to do something like that. Spence, when you're unhappy, I'm unhappy too. No matter how well I feel. Well, today in the history class, we started talking about the Civil War. And this Laura Burkett, just to needle me now, wanted to know why the Negroes in the South had to wait for the Northerners to come down and help them. And the teacher, Miss Bailey, went on to explain how they were so, well, backward. Well, anyway, Graham, when she finished talking, they sounded like the worst morons that ever lived. And I began to wonder how they'd managed to live in Africa a few thousand years all by themselves, with nobody's help. I would have let it pass, see? Except the whole class was giggling and turning around looking at me. So I just got up, stood next to my desk, and I looked at her. She looked at me for a couple of minutes and asked me if perhaps I had something to say in the discussion. I said, I might have a lot of things to say in this discussion if I didn't have to say them in the company of such dumb jerks. And I asked her, I said, what about the uprising of the slaves during the Civil War? And what about Frederick Douglass? That's beside the point, young man. Well, in that case, I said, I don't want to be in your crummy history class, and I walk right out of the room. Oh, Spence, you didn't. I most certainly did. Spence, I hardly know what to believe. You exaggerate so. Well, even allowing for a little exaggeration, Graham, that's what happened. Well, after that story, I could use a glass of beer. The doc told you not to. I'm going to tell Mom, Graham. <laughs> You're in no position to tell anybody anything. Well, give it here. I think the folks
folks will go for the story, Graham? I'm not sure. I mean, they're not gonna go for it at all, huh? I mean that you're gonna get what you rightfully deserve. Well, that's a nasty thing to say, considering the fact I was justified. Well, there's ways and ways of being justified. You mean I shouldn't have gotten sassy with that fruitcake? Spencer, I'm not gonna say another word to you today if you keep using language like that. Well, cry out loud. You're gonna be a crumb just like the rest of the crummy world. Listen, are you my friend or not, Graham? No, I'm not. Not when you talk like that. Well, thanks a lot. You're a real good Joe. You're a psalm singer, just like the rest of them. Love me when I'm good and hate me when I'm bad. Well, thanks a lot, Graham. Don't mention it. You're welcome. The pleasure was all mine. You know, for an old lady, you sure can be plenty sarcastic when you want to be. Queen Sarcastia of Poopsville, USA. These will be the last words that I'll say to you today, Master Scott. Hi, Vince. Hi. Well, well, well. If it isn't the three musketeers, how you pals? Hi, Spence. Well, Mrs. Scott. Gussie, ever since you could talk, I've told you that I'm not Mrs. Scott. I'm Mrs. Martin. How long do I have to keep telling you this? Well, I forgot, Mrs. Martin. Yeah, you seem to forget a lot of things, don't you? Like sticking up for a friend when he's being chewed out by his teacher. Well, now, what could we say? Exactly what you did. Nothing. Oh, it was fine. What did I call you, pals? Well, that's exactly what you are. 200 carat solid gold plate pals. And another thing, I don't know, maybe I'm getting deaf or something, but I don't hear you guys calling me for school anymore in the morning. Oh, Spence. You know, good and well, I take Marguerite to school in the morning. Oh, yeah? Where are you taking her at night when you mosey past my house with her curled around your arm like a snake? We're doing our homework together. It's a little dark in the park for homework. Cut it out, Spence, your grandmother. My grandmother knows what the score is. She's been knowing the score an awful long time now. She's gone on 83 years old, so you can talk freely in front of her. All right. It isn't Marguerite's fault. I told you before, she likes you. It's her father. Well, well Mr. Wendowski, well, well, he, well, he doesn't like colored people. I'm sorry, Mrs. Martin, but that's the lousy truth, Spence. He just doesn't like them. And I don't like Polish people either. Never have and I never will. Sometimes I think Hitler was right. Oh, cut it out, Graham. You knew he wasn't right. Now, what'd you have to go and say that for? I don't care. I don't like them. I never have and I never will. Listen, will you quit mixing in the things you don't understand, please? All right, fellas, what'd you come over here for? What do you want? Well, uh, tomorrow's Saturday. We're getting up a ball game and... And you want me to pitch for you, huh? Well, what happens after the ball game? Tomorrow, I mean. Well, there's a little gathering, gathering. over at Marguerite's. It's gonna be a real wing ding. Who are you taking, Gussie? Oh, I thought I'd give Marie Evelyn a buzz and... Oh, I see. So I'm not invited, huh? Well, no thanks. If I'm not good enough for the little gathering, then I'm not good enough to pitch for you. Anyway, Marguerite's father might not like that either. And another thing, if I couldn't do any better than that Marguerite Wandowski and her old man, I'd join the Foreign Legion. Somebody someday is gonna take a poke at you, Spence. If he hits you, Spence, hit him right back. He's not gonna hit anybody, Graham. Now, get out of my house before I beat you and your whole team over the head. Get out and don't ever come back. You mean that? Yeah, I mean it. I just don't get you, Spence. Just get out of here, will you? Well, uh, uh, goodbye, Mrs. Scott. Martin. Martin! Martin! I just went and did it again, Graham. And I didn't want them to know how much they hurt me. Spence, let you and I look at a little television. Sometimes, Graham, you can get the most disgusting ideas. You're no fun to be with anymore. 
won't even look at a little television with me. Well, go on, look at television. Spend the rest of your life with your head stuck in front of an old light bulb. What do I care? Spence, go get the hairbrush. Your hair could stand a good brushing. Spence, you don't suppose you could go back up to school and tell them that you was eating a chocolate cigar, could you? No, Graham, that, that wouldn't do. No. One dumb, crummy girl at school the other day wanted to know if we had to comb and brush our hair. <laughs> What'd you tell her? I told her we seldom bothered until the bugs got so fierce they started falling into our food. It was an absolute necessity. Spence, you didn't. No, I didn't, but I would have if I thought of it in time. We haven't done this in a long while, have we? What? Don't you remember when you was a little boy, I used to brush and comb your hair every day? You used to stand just much shorter than you are now. My brush and comb your hair. I used to do this for all my boys. They'd sit and tell me all their troubles while I brushed and combed their hair. anymore. I cramped that style with the broads. Why? That's a stupid question. Because I'm black, that's why. Maybe it's a good thing they don't want you around. I told your mother years and years ago, May, stay out of the South End. There's nothing down there but wops and polar. Oh, cut it out, Graham. Sometimes you're no help at all. I tell you my troubles and you come telling me how we shouldn't have moved down here in the first place. But we're here, Graham, right here, and I was born here. They're the only friends I've got. Makes me pretty unhappy, too. We'll think of something, Spence. We'll think of something. Come on, you better go upstairs. You look tired. Yes, I am tired. And when I'm tired, I like to look tired. I'm no hypocrite. Besides, you don't want Mom to catch you down here. That's right. Hey, look, Graham, you don't suppose you could lend me five dollars, could you? What on earth you want that much money for? Well, you and I both know, Graham, that in about an hour from now, I'm going to be about the smallest thing crawling on two legs. The old lady is sure to let me have it. You mustn't talk about your mother that way. Well, she is. When Pop gets home, he's going to cuss me out and say I'm no son of his, no good. Well, in short, he's going to call me a no good little bastard. For a starter. Well, after old Hasbrook gave me the heave hole, Graham, I went by the bank to talk to Pop. And I lost my nerve. I don't know, Graham. I just can't seem to get through with Pop. We don't play on the same team or something. He means well, but he just hasn't got the equipment. Well, you see, Graham, if you'd lend me $5, I could get Mom some flowers and, well, maybe get Pop a cigar and begin by telling him how sorry I am. It might take the edge off things, Graham. What do you say? Just wait a minute.
Thanks, Graham. You're a real pal. Is always murder at the bank. Line at my window a block long. Is J.P. Morgan home already? What's new with the boy bank teller? Now, she isn't supposed to be up yet. That means I'm going to be heckled all night and Friday night of all nights after a miserable day at the bank. Well, what's Moby Dick belly aching about now? Mama? Is Spence home yet? Isn't he home yet? Mother, did Spence get home from school? I'm sorry, I can't hear a word you're saying. I hope he isn't horsing around someplace. He ought to be studying up for those midterms. Now, don't worry about Spence Lem. He'll do as good as anybody else. As good as anybody else is not good enough. Colored boy's got to be better than anybody else in order to wind up being as good as anybody else, if you get what I mean. Well, it's in English. That's all I can say for it. Mama, I thought you couldn't hear a thing. You take me down to the bank, I gotta be twice as good as the guy at the next window, just in order to hold my job. If I hear another word about that ratty bank, I'll blow it up. If she doesn't stop heck... Hello? Uh, this is Mr. Scott speaking. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Hasbrook. How are you? How's everything down at South End High? You... Oh. You want to talk to me about who? About Spence? Yes. Spence? Oh, hi, Alan. I was on my way over to your house. I finished my homework early, and well, so I thought Well, that's disgusting, I... man. You've got a whole weekend ahead of you. Why'd you have to finish your homework so soon? Now, look, if I want to get my homework done, that's my business. I don't tell you it's disgusting when you don't get yours done at all, I'm do I? I'm sorry, Alan. You were on your way over to my house. For what? I just wanted to tell you that when you lit into that witch in history class, I felt like applauding. Gee, if I got kicked out of school, I guess I'd just as soon drop dead right there on the floor in the principal's look, office. Look, Alan. You don't have to rub it in. I get the message, all right? I'm sorry, Spence. Look, is there anything I can do? Look, what in the name of Ulysses S. Grant could you do about it? So let's forget it. Look, I didn't mean that business about dropping dead. I probably wouldn't drop dead anyway. There's nothing wrong with my heart. Will you please cut it out, Alan? Talk too much. I've gone and hurt your feelings, haven't I? I'm sorry, Alan. I've always liked you, Alan. Even if nobody else... I mean... Well, you're a real good Joe, Alan. And I'm apologizing. It's okay, Spence. I know you're upset. What are you going to do about Miss Bailey? Apologize? Now listen, I just finished apologizing to you, and that's enough apologizing for one day. Besides, what do I care if I go back to school or not, anyway? I'm on my way to meet my girlfriend. Girlfriend? Who's the girl, Spence? Well, just a girl, that's all. Well, here comes my bus, Alan.
I want a glass of beer. Yeah? Yeah. How old are you? You ask him how old he was? No, I didn't. Then why are you asking me? Uh, I happen to be 21. When's your birthday? Hurry up, spit it out. Come on, kid, get out. Out! Shut up. Now shut up. And give me a dime for that phone. Now listen, Frank, don't you be jumping salty with me. Oh, cut it out. Will you, Poppy? Get back on the phone. If we don't raise the money for the rent, we'll be out in the street tomorrow. And here's your dime, young. Will you all shut up? I can't hear a word. Do you remember the time you took Violet down to New York and registered in that hotel as Mr. and Mrs.? Well, to get down to New York, you had to cross a state line. Have you ever heard of the Man Act? Well, Violet has. Well, all Violet is asking for is $10. And she wants it tonight at Carly's Drugstore, else the FBI. Now, have you got all that sugar? Fine. We'll be looking for you here in 10 minutes. Hey, coming in here, blackmailing somebody on my telephone. Oh, we ain't blackmailing anybody. We're just keeping ourselves available. There's no telling next week sometime one of those boys might be glad we're still here. I can't see why. Why don't you shut up? This is supposed to be a place of business. A gentleman comes in for a nice, quiet drink. And if it ain't a bunch of floozies, it's a jukebox. Mister, don't you be calling us no floozies here. I'm liable to come over there and snatch you breathless. Oh, come on, Papa. Don't pay no attention to him. Coming in here for a quiet drink, he calls. I seen you lamping that little girl over there. Yeah, and you too, Buster, for that matter. Oh, yeah. come on, Violet, and get your telephone book out. We ain't got all night. Well, I don't know why we ain't got all night. We ain't got nothing else to do. Well, have we? No, we haven't, stupid. But you don't have to say it in here, do you? We have to keep up some pretenses, Poppy. Hey, Frank. What? Bring over another bottle of ginger ale. What do you want in it? We have our own whiskey, thank you. Then it'll cost you 15 cents a bottle. And don't be coming in here with food. This ain't no lousy picnic ground. Well, it's lousy. And ice will cost you a dime. Well, bring it on over, you chinchy skunk. Calling me names like that? You come right over here and get it for yourself. Can I help you, pal? Oh, yeah. I want a glass of beer, please. <laughs> well, what's so funny? I asked you for a glass of beer. Quick, when were you born? January 20th, 1938. January 20th, 1938. Yeah, okay. That makes you 21. Say, we got a special on whiskey today. You know, Hotshot, you got remarkable powers of persuasion. But I ask you for a glass of beer, if you don't mind. That's right, sugar. Don't you drink none of that man's whiskey. He ferments it himself. You sure are right, Frank. That whiskey is special. Specially awful. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> hey, Sugar, why don't you come over here and sit with us? Sure. Yeah, baby. Welcome to our home, away from home. Interpretations of dreams by Sigmund Freud. You believe in this stuff? Fraud. I don't know. It's just required reading in our psychology class. 
Does it say anything in this book about umbrellas? I keep having the lousiest dreams with umbrellas in them. I don't know. I just skimmed through it. You mind if I take a look? No, go ahead. Say, do any of you girls know the young lady sitting over there? No, we don't know her at all. She's a mousy little thing, ain't she? No, I don't think she's mousy at all. I can't find a thing in this book about umbrellas. This is the lousiest dream book I ever saw. Well, let me find it. Say, let's get to work or we'll never raise the rent money. Say, Rose, you call Homer. His number's Main 28927. And here's the dime. Hey, did you say canes or umbrellas? Umbrellas, sugar. Ain't much difference between canes and umbrellas, is it? What's it say about canes? Doesn't say much. It says here that a woman dreams about a man with a cane. <sighs> Must mean you're pretty batty because they've got her whole life's history written up here. I didn't say I dreamed about canes, did I? I said umbrellas. Don't be trying to push her dreams off on me. And don't be looking in those crazy people's dreams either. Look for some nice person who dreams about umbrellas. Hello? Homer, this is Rose. Well, I know an awful lot of Homers, too, but I know which one you are. Rose Thompson. How you been? Ain't seen you in a month of Sundays. Wouldn't that be a heck of a thing, a month with only Sundays in it? You spend the rest of your life in church. Shut up. Well, I was calling you because we're in a kind of a jam. Violet and Poppy and me. <laughs> yeah, the three flowers. Well, we need some money for the rent. Oh, I don't know. I guess everybody's trying to save what with Christmas coming and all, and they're just cutting down on the little luxuries. Oh, Homer, you say the most terrible things. Why, the son of a... Well, how about it? Well, I guess we're going to have to talk to your wife, sugar. Well, no, no, I don't want to talk to her tonight. You wouldn't. Well, just thanks for nothing, Homer. The same to you, quartetted. Can you beat that? He said he couldn't care less whether his wife knew or not. You know, there's something terribly immoral about that. <laughs> right. It's getting to the place nobody has any respect for marriage these days. Mm -hmm. I just wish somebody would ask me to marry him. I'd split their heads wide open. Nobody else. Uh, excuse me, but are you girls prostitutes or something? Well, honey, we try to be. Oh, yeah? Hey, I've never met any real prostitutes before. You mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Uh, well, baby, right now we're in a little hot water. We also got to meet a certain Sydney at Carter's drugstore. But as soon as we get back, we'll answer all your questions. Come on, girls. Well, I don't see why we all have to go down and get a little ten dollars from Sydney. Because in Union, there is strength. Now, come on out of that chair and let's go. Yeah. Well, I think I'll have one of your specials now. You mean whiskey? Well, what's the matter? You got a new name for it? All right, Buster. Take it easy. Mind if I sit down?
Look, uh, are you sure I'm not bothering you or anything? Because if I am, I can get the heck up and go someplace else, you know. These tables aren't reserved. You can sit anywhere you please. If you bother me, I can get up and get the hell out of here. That's all. I'm sorry. Where are you going? Oh, if you don't want me to. Sit down, kid. I didn't mean to scare you away. Yeah, I guess a nice girl like you does have to be careful who she talks to in a joint like this. Well, but you don't need to be afraid of me, though. What makes you think I'm such a nice girl? I can just tell, that's all. What makes you think I'm not like Violet Rose and Poppy? Oh, come on, quit your kidding. <laughs> well, thanks for thinking I'm different from Violet Rose and Poppy. Well, you are, aren't you? Yeah. In one or two respects, I guess I am. I thought so. Uh, my name's Spencer Scott. Everybody calls me Spence. Hello, Spence. You're not really 21, are you? I was lying then. You see, I have to lie about my age until I get to be 21. But when I get to be 21, not another lie is gonna pass my lips. That's very sweet. No, I really honestly mean that. I really honestly believe you. You'd never believe it to look at me, but you're looking at one of the most friendless persons in the whole United States. Oh, come on. Well, I guess that wasn't exactly the truth. You see, I've got my gram. She's the only friend I got. I guess. Have you got a match, kid? Oh, yes. Yeah. Thanks. So, what makes you think you're so friendless? For a while, I thought maybe it was me. Maybe, maybe my personality wasn't so hot or something. You know? You see, I'm a, I'm a real guy. Like I saw you in the window there, and thought I'd give it a whirl. <laughs> Thanks for seeing me in the window. I, I know you think it sounds pretty silly, because, well, I know how girls are about going around with boys younger than they are. But have you gotten a really good look at the Kenzie report lately? No, I'm afraid I'm not quite the reader that you are. Well, uh, I'm honestly not one to boast, but, well, it says in that book that boys my age are usually pretty sexy. In fact, they're sexier at my age than they ever will be again in their whole lives. And, uh, so what with my other qualifications? Well, I should be a pretty good boyfriend to have around. You know, I can imagine that that's the truth. Look, I, I want you to know that if everything works out all right and we decide we love each other, well, I'm, I'm perfectly willing to get married. <laughs> my father wants me to go to college. But I'd be willing to forego that if, if everything works out all right. What do you say, huh? Spence, that was about the sweetest proposal that I've ever had. Is something wrong? No, it's too much beer, I guess. You know what you ought to do? You ought to go on home and let your grandmother give you a great big kiss and tuck you in. No, you don't understand. I won't be going home. I've packed my bag and everything. I've got to get a job. Now, what do you say, huh? I already told you what I say. Go on home. You talk about getting a job. What in the name of heaven could you do? You couldn't do any more than my husband. Your husband? Yeah. He works. All day, and he works all night. And we've still got nothing. He is what is commonly known as unskilled labor. And I guess you know what that means. I'm sorry, kid. You should have told me you were married in the first place. I feel like a great big can of garbage. I've got to go now. Where are you going? You see that man over there? Well, he's been staring at me all evening. And I hope
hope he has some money. And I hope he has a car. Nice car with the top that goes down. And we can go for a drive in the country. And maybe for an hour or two, we can have some fun. I think that's terrible. So do I. So that makes two of us. And if my husband never found out, I guess he'd kill me, so... That makes three of us. But... I can't go back to that lousy one-room flat and wait all night. It's too quiet there. Nobody to talk to. It's just no fun, that's all. Well, if you're going, why don't you go? It's funny how when you're young, you can be so selfish about your feelings, isn't it? Thank you for the proposal. Please, don't be sore. I tried to help. Spence, there's a little rhyme I used to know when I was a kid. It goes, Mary, have we met? Mary, have we been? Mary, let us part and Mary, meet again. Let's not part angrily, huh? Spence. Good luck, kid. Please. Go on home. like I'm doing out here. Is there any lipstick on my mouth to speak of? What are you doing smearing lipstick on your face like that? Are you peculiar or something? Oh, uh, cut the comedy. You remember that girl that was inside? Yeah. Oh, I get it. She kissed him. Yeah. Guess you might say I'm a pretty fast worker, huh? How would you like to come with me? Where are we going? Well, you said you wanted to talk to me, didn't you? I thought we could go someplace where we could be alone. Quiet a place. Well, what's the matter, honey? Too much to drink? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, well, come on, sugar. We can fix that in a flash. You got enough money to buy some sandwich or something? Yeah, I've got $2.39 here. And that sounds like the price of something in a fire sale, don't it? Let's go. <laughs> well, Rose, face it. $2.39 is $2.39, and every little bit helps. Amen. I call the pizza place, the drugstore, and the bowling alley. He hasn't been in all evening. What about Tony's house and Gussie's? Well, I phoned them all. They haven't seen him. Then where the devil is he? I don't know, Daddy. I've told you that over and over again. And stop yelling. You want the neighbors to hear. Come on inside. Is that mother of yours asleep yet? Well, I gave her a pill. That doesn't seem to mean much. I think that banshee knows more than she's letting on. Well, there's a 500-watt light down in the cellar. Why don't you bring it up along with your rubber hose and give her the third degree? Look, why don't you stop trying to be so smart? It's the trouble with your whole family. They think they're smart. Why don't you read your paper, Daddy, or watch television for a while? I get my hands on that little bastard, I'll break every bone in his body. Now, that's no way to talk, Daddy. It most certainly is not. It's disgraceful. 
Mama, will you please keep out of it? The truth is the truth and should be spoken at all times. Mother, please. Don't mother please me. The truth is the truth. It is disgraceful. Will you please tell her to stay out of it? Mother, please. Well, speak up to him and don't let him get away with that talk. I'd speak up, Mama, if you'd give me half a chance. Calling your husband daddy. That's the silliest thing I ever heard. Mama, if you don't keep out of this, I'll come upstairs and give you a pill and shut your door. And I'll spit out the pill and open the door, so there. Will you two please stop bickering so we can get down to the point at hand? Do you know where he is? Hey, old lady, I'm talking to you. Well, if you're talking to me, my name is Mrs. Martin. And I'd thank you to remember that. No, I don't know where he is. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Would you tell me, Mama? Tell you? After you telling me to shut up? I wouldn't tell you a thing. I didn't tell you to shut up, Mama. I just said, Mother, please. Same thing. Well, there's no use talking to her. You're as stubborn as an old mule. I heard that, and I'll remember it. Well, what now? Do you suppose we should call the police? For what? We haven't done anything, have we? They could help us find him. Look, there'll be no police in this house ever for any reason. Now you're being silly. You heard what I said. There'll be no police in this house. Come on in. Hey, what's that? Two men next door. Don't worry about them. Big death. Sound like they weren't here. Well, they're not. They're in the next room. The walls here are real thin. Thin is hardly the word for it. You might say they were put together with spitballs. Hey, I thought you said we were going to a restaurant so we could talk. Much more comfy to talk here. We can have something sent in if we want it. Don't you want to take your jacket off? It's kind of warm in here. Yeah, I guess I will. Well, you wouldn't mind if I changed to something a little more comfortable, would you? No. Won't be a minute. Oh, uh, you got anything to eat around here? I'm a little groggy. I think it's because I haven't had anything to eat all day. Oh, there's some crackers in the cabinet. Hey, you got any cheese to go with these crackers? Look around and see. I can't find any. I guess Poppy must have took it for the trap. Now, how do I look? Do you honestly feel more comfortable than that thing? Oh, much, much more. Now, come on, let's go down over here so we can talk. You think it would tickle the back of your neck? Something awful. Well, what are we gonna talk about? I thought you wanted to talk to me. These crackers don't seem to be doing a bit of good. Come on closer. Well, I, I can hear you from here. Come on, sugar. Stop being so bashful. Well, I'm, I'm not being bashful. Come on. All right, all right. You don't have to pull on me. Now, tell Violet all about it. All about what? Well, what's troubling you, baby? Well, nothing's troubling me. Well, suppose you give Violet a little kiss. That'll make you feel better. Well, I honestly don't see how a kiss is gonna help my hunger any. Well, try it, baby, and see. Come on. Oh, come on, sugar. You can do better than that. Well, you know what? No, what? I left my book at the bar. Well, let it stay. There ain't nobody gonna run away with it. Well, how can you be so sure of that? Listen, sugar. Nobody that goes in Frank's ever reads nothing. Just take my word for it. Well, well, I better go anyway. You trying to run out on me? 
No, why would I want to do a thing? Well, that sure is shooting what it looks like. What happened to all them questions you wanted to ask me? What happened to all that big talk you was throwing around at the bar? Well, nothing happened to it. I got a headache. I'm hungry. At least I think I'm hungry. Well, I think you just plain scared. Say, how old are you anyway? I told you, I'm 21. <laughs> if you're 21, I'm sweet 16. Come over here. You never been in a place like this before, have you? No. Kind of scared, ain't you? Yeah, I, I guess I am a little scared. Look, I, I just want to go to the bar and get my book now, if you don't mind. Look, kid, I most certainly do mind. Now, let me tell you how this mess works. You done took me out of circulation for roughly 15 minutes now. Well, in 15 minutes, anything can happen. So if you think you're just going to put your coat on and walk out of here, you got another thought coming. I want my $2.39. That's all the money I've got. I know that's all the money you've got. You think if you had more, I'd be asking you for $2.39? What do you take me for? Oh, honey, it's not that I don't understand. It's just that business is business. Can I keep half a dollar for supper? You can take the crackers when you leave. I want my two thirty-nine. Thank you. And another thing. If you tell anybody that all you paid me was two dollars and thirty-nine cents, I'll have your head on a platter, you hear me? I hear you. Can I go now? Help yourself. What's the matter? You lose something? Uh, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. There ain't no money involved. I might. Well, there is. Will you let me have bus fare? I want to go home. That's what I get for fooling around with kids. You can just reach in and get bus fare. And only bus fare. What's the matter with you anyway? Nothing. I just don't feel so good. Thanks for the dime. Don't bother thanking me. It hurts me to give it to you. Thanks anyway. It's just one thing I want you to know. What's that? Well, that's the ugliest bathrobe I've ever seen in my whole life. Oh, he's coming down the street now, then. And he's carrying a bag. Well, I'll be... Now, don't holler at him, Daddy, till we find out where he's been. Yeah, it's me, Graham. I've lost my glasses and can't seem to find them. Be right up. You'll sit down, young man. I want to talk to you. It'll take just a second. Paul. Second's too long. That traitor upstairs can wait for our glasses. You sit down. Spence, you don't look well. Where have you been? Spence, I haven't told them a thing, and if they say I have, they're lying. Look, will you shut her up? Mama, please. Oh, shut up yourself. Mother, please, mother, please. Why don't you just tell me to shut up and be done with it? Spence, I smell beer on your breath. Have you been drinking beer? Yeah, right after two shots of whiskey. Well, I'll be dead. Now, Daddy, please. Don't be calling that man Daddy. He's no husband of mine. 
Who have you been drinking beer with, Francis? I'd rather not say, Ma. Why not? Because you wouldn't know anyway. I'd still like to know. Look, Mom, I'm trying to be honest with you. If you keep asking me, I'm going to start lying about it. And I'd, I'd rather not lie about it, Mom. Then don't think we don't know you were kicked out of school today. Well, goody for you, Pop. You better talk to this little bum, May, before I break his neck. There he goes again. It's disgraceful. Do you know what you did that was wrong? I didn't do anything that was wrong, Ma. Then that settles it. He was kicked out of school for just doing nothing. I didn't mean I didn't do anything, Pop. I just thought I was justified, that's all. He was justified. We got a genius on our hands, May. He knows more than the teacher. Where'd you get that cigar? Out of your box. There you are. In other words, you've been stealing your father's cigars? I wouldn't exactly call it that, Ma. Well, that's damn well what I'd call it. Your father, Spence, will go up to the school with you on Monday. You will apologize to Miss Bailey and be reinstated in school. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Mom. I, I, I can't see my way clear to doing that. You mean you're going to disobey both your father and me? I'm not going to disobey either of you, Mom. I just kind of thought you'd be on my side, that's all. You're going to do as you're told. All right, you can make me go up there, but I'm not going to apologize to anyone. Stop talking back to your mother. I'm not talking back to her. I just want her to understand how I feel, that's all. But we don't care how you feel. Now, what do you think of that? You talk about what you'll do and what you won't do. We do things we don't want to do every day of our lives. I hear those crumbs down at the bank talking about niggas, making jokes about niggas. But I stay on because I need the job so that I can get the things that you need. What do you do? You get to still a little behind, kicked out of school, now you're too proud to go back. Will you listen to that man running his big mouth? Uh. We've never been so humiliated. All the neighbors are talking. I'm sorry about that, Mom. You're not sorry at all. If you were, you would have prevented it. We've bent every effort to see that you were raised in a decent neighborhood. And what is more, you've never been denied anything, Spence. We didn't want you to live in slums because we always wanted the best for you. And you have no business talking back to white women, no matter what they say or what they do. If you were in the South, you could be lynched for that. And your father and I couldn't do anything about it. So from now on, my advice to you is try and remember your place. You'll pardon me for saying so, Mom, but that's the biggest hunk of bull I've ever heard in my whole life. What the hell was that you said? You both ought to be ashamed to talk to me that way. You get the hell on upstairs. Don't you come down here until you can apologize to both of us. Go on! All right, Pop, I'll go upstairs. Because you're my father and I still have to do what you tell me to. But I'm still ashamed of you and I want you both to know it. You go straight to your room. Don't you go stopping by that traitor's room. Who should stop him, I'd like to know. I will. If you come in my room with that nasty mouth of yours, I'll slap every tooth down your throat. It's a fine state of affairs when a man can't have a little respect in his own home. What has either of you done to get respect, I'd like to know? Nothing but bully the boy. All right now, Mother, you stay out of it. I'll not keep out of it. I got something to say, I say it, and you know it. So don't try to hush me up. Mother, if you come down these stairs, I'm going to tell the doctor. Oh, tell him, smell him, knock him down and sell him. What do you think I care? All this slapping and going on. Mother, please. Oh, let her run herself down. Won't take long. That's where you're wrong. I have no intentions of running down. I've got a few things to say, and I'm going to say them. Well, go ahead and say it and get it over with. I will. You worry about that. Now, in the first place, that nasty little hudger that teaches history up at that school deserves exactly what she got. The only thing I think is Spence didn't tell her enough. He can't go around talking to people like that. Well, that's a lot of twaddle, and you know it. Now, in the second place, when you moved down here, did you ever stop to take into consideration that something like this was bound to happen sooner or later? And that the most important thing might have been just your love and comfort? <laughs> you did not. And right on working. And instead of your company, he got a book, a bicycle, electric train. 
Well, the stuff that came in this house was ridiculous. Well, that's none of your business. Will you let me finish? I don't go along with that kind of raising one way or the other. Allow me to be the first to tell you both. Do you know that that boy is absolutely alone? He hasn't got a friend in the world. You didn't know, did you? That all his little pals have taken up with the girls. And the little girl's mothers don't want their daughters going around with a colored boy. Well, whether you know it or not, he's alone. And now you want to forsake him completely by not backing him up. You moved him out of the slums, taught him to think of himself as something to be respected. And now you're getting mad because he does the very thing that you made it possible for him to do. That bull, as he called you, about staying in his place. Well, I'm ashamed of both of you, and I want you to know it. You said what I come down to say. Help me up off this couch. Well, don't sit there like a dumb ox. Come on and help me. You hadn't ought to come downstairs, Mama. You know that. I come downstairs when I want to. And what do you think of that? Trouble with you two? You're too careful. I'm an old woman. I ain't got much longer to live one way or the other. So I'll come downstairs when I want to. Mama, did Spence tell you all this? Well, I certainly didn't hear it by talking to the neighbors. Well, why didn't he say so when we were talking with him? How could he? You both attacked him just like a rattlesnake the minute he got in the door. We did not. You did so? And I think you ought to apologize to him. Don't be a crumb all your life. Why didn't you tell me all this was going on, May? Because I didn't know, Daddy. Well, it's a mother's business to know what's happening to her son, isn't it? You know, I didn't know how it would take place, but I knew it would turn out to be my fault. Oh, well, I didn't oh, mean... Oh, shut that. up. What's that you said to me? I said, shut up. I told you not to hop on him the minute he came in the house. Maybe if you'd ask him questions instead of calling him names, you would have found this all out. And you wouldn't have to stand there looking so foolish now. You were just as bad as I was. Spence is hungry. I am going out in the kitchen and warm his food. You go upstairs and talk to him. Now go. Spence? Yes, Pop. We're going to have a little talk. Sit down, son. You comfortable? Yeah, Pop, I'm comfortable. How you feel? I feel all right, Pop. A little groggy from the stuff I've been drinking. I'll be all right. Yeah, well, that serves you right. You got to stop going around doing all these things. You hear? Yeah, Papa, I hear. All right. Another thing, you got to stop talking back to me. There's one thing that makes me good and mad is talking back. I can't stand it and I won't stand it. Don't show the proper respect. You understand? Yeah, Papa, I understand. All right. Now, you're going to college, you know that, don't you? Yes, Pop. Yeah, well, you just be sure that you do. Now, you just go on and forget about these little skunks around here. Don't pay any attention to them. You've got bigger things to think about. If they don't want to play with you, you just tell them to uh, 
and go to hell. Because you're better than any ten of them put together. You understand? Yes, Pop, I understand. All right. Now, you got your studies, and you got your grandmother, your mother, and me. If it's anything you want, you just come to me and tell me about it, and I'll get it for you. You understand? Yeah, Pop, I understand. Yeah, all right. Well, your mother's warming some food for you. You better go down and get it. Well, Pop, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm not too hungry. I think I'll just... I think I'll go to bed. Now, that's just what I'm talking about. It's silly to go around moping. Pop, I know it's silly. I, I know that. Look, I'm gonna do what you told me to, Pop, but I, I just want to go to bed now, if you don't mind. All right. Good night, Pop. Thanks for helping me. That's all right. away from me. Mama! Oh, Mama! Leave me alone with Spence. But, Mama... I want to talk to Spence. I'll go call the doctor. It's all right, Graham. We're gonna get the doctor. Don't bother. He's a quack. Spence, will you promise me something? Yes, Graham. Don't you let anything or anybody get you down. You respect yourself, and they'll respect you. I, I know, Graham. Please don't talk. Just one more thing. You've got to cut out all that damn swearing. You hear me? Yes, ma'am. And you... You... Graham! 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 Hey, Mom! Call Dr. Sloan. I call the doctor. He'll be right Would over. Would you tell me what I told you? I called the doctor. He'll be right. He doesn't have to hurry. She's dead. Where are you going, Spence? I'm going outside. You better stay here. Your mother needs you. I can't. She's got you anyway. Now, how can you be so selfish? What's the matter with you? Look, Bob, I just want to go outside. That's all. You don't have to go outside to cry, Spence. You don't have to be ashamed before us. <laughs> I honestly don't see how I'm going to get through this. You will, Sugar. You will.
Why aren't you going, Christine? Of all the maids we had, Graham hated you the least. I know. But somebody's got to stay here and clean up and put the dinner on the stove. Straighten your tie. Cigar. I just thought I'd smoke it. Common decency. Surely you could wait until after she's buried, at least. Well, it's just a cigar. It's not as if I was taking a drink or something. Not that I couldn't stand a good stiff belt. Lamb? a day. Critter, but you are the worst mule I've met. Now, why didn't you eat your lunch? I didn't want it. Did you take your tonic? No. I didn't quite catch that. Don't be mumbling at me, boy. Was that yes or no that you... I said no. Boy, you're gonna make some woman a pretty miserable husband one these days. Of course, you know I don't believe you're not eating. I think you're sneaking that kitchen after I'm gone and eat everything in sight. Did you hear me? Spence, why don't you eat something? Anything. A crust of bread. You know, it kills me when folks don't eat. I never met anybody who could pick out just the right way to worry somebody. Won't you please go inside and eat just a little bit? I said no. Make me sick. The feeling is very mutual. You know, I've seen a lot of mourning in my day, but if the mourning you do don't beat anything I've seen, I don't want a nickel. Well, what do you say to my making a bargain with you? Well, what is it? Well, I'll eat that slop you made in there. If you just leave me alone. You got a deal. soup is this? Check it. Well, it tastes awful. What you put in this stuff? Nothing. What's in... Did you put this tonic in there, Christine? <laughs> Why, does it taste that bad? It tastes just like poison. You're a lousy cook. No wonder you can't keep a husband. I'll have you know I only had one husband and he died. I'm not surprised. Spence, I'm not going to talk to you again today. You're not really mad at me, are you, Christine? 
Well, I was just kidding. Oh, come on, Christine. You know I don't really think you'd kill your husband. <laughs> you know, boy, you are a mess. Now, what's the matter? I was just thinking. The funeral was four days ago. Wouldn't you have thought one of the fellows might have come over to see me by now? Well, the last time they were over here, I heard you threw them out. Oh, they know I didn't mean that. I sure do miss Graham, Christine. Miss her a heck of a lot. She's dead. You can tell yourself that and you can accept it. But the guys are different, Christine. They're not dead. They're up in the gym playing basketball or horsing around the park somewhere. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's my crummy age. Is everybody unhappy at 17? You know, Spence, I think it's a law. Were you? Plenty. And don't ask me how long ago that was, either. Don't worry. I'm not gonna ask you. Maybe it's this town. Were you born here? No, I was born in Birmingham, Alabama, in Ensley, near the steel mills. Bet you didn't like it much down there, did you? No, I didn't like it much down there. I wanted something better, I guess, so I decided I would come up north and try my luck. I worked a year and saved my money, and the day I had what was enough, I went down to the railroad station. Boy, that was some day. The sun was shining. And I felt real good, you know, like you do maybe once or twice in your whole life. When I got down to the ticket window, the man had a calendar with a big advertisement on it for an insurance company. So I looked at the name of the town, and I told the man that that's where I wanted my ticket to take me. <laughs> then I went home and packed my mama's cardboard suitcase. And that same night, I caught the train. And that's the last I ever saw my mother and my sisters and brothers. Rusty. Who was Rusty? Rusty was my dog. Did you work for the insurance company? Mm -mm. I went into service for a while. And then I got married. And about two years after that, my husband died. And two months after he died, I had a baby and he was born dead. Christine. For a while, I tell you, all I felt like doing was dying myself. But then I realized that you just can't go on like that. There's a lot of living to be done. And if you want to live, there's some things that you just can't think about too often or too hard. You know, push them to the back of your mind, sort of, and... There in the back of my mind is Bert, my husband, and my baby. I never had a name. <laughs> well, that's the way the ball she bounces. Why well, you sure don't make me feel crummy? Well, why? Well, I've been giving you a hard time about what's been happening to me. Oh, think nothing of it. You know, I have got to get out of here to that other job. You don't have to go now, do you, Christine? Can't you stay a little while longer? Why? Well, I want to talk to you. Well, what about? N nothing in particular. I just I want to talk to you. Oh, I'll be back tomorrow, Spence. Well, it's, it's just one thing, Christine. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I should tell you or not. Oh, sure you can tell me. You sure you won't tell anybody? I won't mention it to a soul. No matter what it is? I've already said I won't tell, haven't I? Well, I want to be with a girl, Christine. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Nothing. I, 
I had to swallow it wrong, Sven. Tell me something. Have you, have you had much experience? Well, at what? You know it, boy. Have you had much experience? No. Well, I mean, offhand, how much experience would you say you've had? You know, Spence, I think that's the kind of question that is every woman's right not to answer, don't you? I think it's pretty nosy, huh? Yeah, I know. I not only think it's an nosy question, I know it is. I'm sorry. Do you know I'm going on 18 years old and have never been with a girl? Yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? Sure as heck is. I was just thinking when I was sick, just suppose I had died. I mean, just suppose I had passed right out and died now. I'd regret I hadn't been with a girl for the rest of my life, practically. Yes. <laughs> I guess it would be pretty terrible, wouldn't it? You know, I think you're having a heck of a good time laughing at me. I most certainly am not. You don't think it's peculiar or anything? Well, how could anything so natural, Spence, be peculiar? You know, I think we've had enough talk for one afternoon. I've got to go. Oh, Christine. Christine. Uh-huh. I want to ask you something. Well, what is it? Do you like me? I certainly do. I was sure hoping you did, because... Well, I like you too, Christine. Thank you. Now, that settles that. Look, uh, Look, I, I know liking doesn't mean loving or anything, but... Well, I kind of thought that... Well, you're lonely, aren't you, Christine? Oh, I've been lonely for a long time now. Well, in case you didn't know it, I'm lonely too. Look, I, I know you're older than I am, and I know it makes a difference, but... Oh, I see. But what I lack in age, I, I sure make up for in loneliness. So we do have that much in common, don't we, Christine? Yes. Yes. So maybe if you stayed, I mean, since things are like we said they were, maybe we could find happiness together. Just for a little while, not forever or anything like that. Just for a little while. You know, you're kind of young, Spence. And you could be very foolish, too, you know that, don't you? Yeah, I know, Christine. And I could be very foolish to listen to you. I know. You said that maybe just for a little while we... we could find happiness together. You know that so soon? Yeah. I guess I should be laughing at you, but I'm not. I'll think about it, Spence. Give me a minute. I'll think about it. Well, I'm fixing to go up to my room now. Look, if, if you decide you can't stay, well... You don't need to tell me. You can just go.
shop then. Oh, hi, Mom. Home early today, aren't you? Gonna fix your lunch. Oh, you'd have to, Mom. Some lunch meat, man. I could have made some sandwiches or something. Well, I've got a little surprise for you. Oh, you mean I don't have to go to school tomorrow? Yes, you do. Indeed, you do. I ran into a couple of the boys, Tony and Gus. They're coming over to see you this afternoon. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be nice if I picked some ice cream and cake. They'll be right over after they finish their bowl game. As a matter of fact, they said, why don't you come over and play a few innings if you feel up to it? No, I'm not in shape, Mom. Be a nice thing, though. It's about time they came over. Hello, Mr. Scott. Hi, you, Sugar. Hi, Chris. I just dropped in to pick up the rest of my things. Well, if you'll wait just a minute, Christine, I'll have your money for you. Good, good. That stuff comes in handy. Hey, what the heck's going on here? I guess I'm leaving. Sort of. Leaving? Well, you see, there's no longer Graham to be looked after, and you're fine, Spence, so we don't need any more help. Yeah, Mom, but I thought you... What is there to think? If you don't have any work to be done, you don't need anyone to do it. Christine understands that, don't you, Christine? Yes, yes, I'm the understanding type. Uh, Christine, I know the notice was a bit short, so I've added an extra week's pay. Thank you. I'm glad I'm not too proud to take it. So long, sugar. That was a lousy trick, Mom. What are you talking about, Spence? You know what I'm talking about, giving Christine the boot. I don't call an extra week's pay the boot. We don't need Christine anymore, and we're not rich enough to afford help we don't need. I don't care what you call it, Mom. It was a stinking trick. Spence, you watch how you talk to me. And what's all this interest in Christine? Nothing. I just thought... Well, I know what you just thought, young man, and don't you think I don't? Now, what are you talking about? You know, my eyes weren't put on. The way they were put on for nothing. Yeah, I know. All that pampering and coddling she did with you made me sick to my stomach. Now, what do you mean by that? I don't know. What should I mean by that? Maybe you can tell me. You know, I've heard stories about boys being left alone in houses with maids before. Now, I'm not saying it's gone that far, but an ounce of prevention's worth a pound of anybody's cure. You know, you sure have got a dirty mind, Mom. Don't be so sure it's I who has a dirty mind. And if you say that to me again, you'll get a good slap for your pains. How in hell did... Now, don't use that kind of language. Well, if you can pull a stinking stunt like Fire and Christine, I can use that kind of language. And speaking of stunts, what's this song and dance about you bumping into the boys? I bet you didn't bump into them at all. I bet you called him. Well, I can just hear you now. Why don't you come over, fellas, and see Spence? I'll have some cake and ice cream. For crying out loud, Mom, you did call him. What if I did? They're your friends. You lied to me. Well, you can just call him right back and tell him to stay the hell at home, Mom. I most certainly will not. You heard what I said. You can call him right back and tell him to stay at home. What'd you have to go and do that for anyway? Look, I'm not gonna bribe those kids to be my friend with cake and pink punch and ice cream. I don't ever have to bribe anybody to be my friend. You'll do as you're told, and you'll stop being so fresh. And I don't want to hear another word out of you about what you'll do and what you won't do. When you start talking like that, it's about time you got out and got a job of your own and bought a house of your own. But as long as you're under this roof, you're going to do as you're told. Where are you going? I'm going to get the hell out of here. That's well, what go I'm ahead. Going. Go ahead and see how far you'll get acting the way you act. Your father's right about you. You're too proud. You think you can go through life being proud, don't you? Well, you're wrong. You are a little black boy, and you don't seem to understand it, but that's what you are. You think this is bad? Well, it'll be worse. You'll serve them pink punch and ice cream, and you'll do a lot worse. You'll laugh at them when you feel like crying. You'll smile at them when you could put knives right into their backs without giving it a second thought. And you'll never do what you've done and let them know they've hurt you. They never forgive you for that. So go on out and learn the lesson. Get out of here and don't ever come back. You, you, you think it's easy for me to tell my son to crawl when I know he can walk and walk well? I'm sorry I ever had children. I'm sorry you didn't die when you were a baby. Do you hear that? I'm sorry you didn't die. You want to know something, Mom? I'm kind of sorry about that myself. Wait. Sam. 
going with you. Oh, you are? You bet I am. I'm not going to stay in that house. I don't have to beg anybody to be my friend with cake and ice cream and pink punch. Damn it, I hate being black, Christine. I hate it. I hate it. I hate the hell out of it. No, no, you don't mean that, boy. Christine, what am I going to do? I don't know. But I tell you one thing, you're going to be black a long time. And you've got to learn to live with it. You realize I don't even know where you live? How can Fine. I get in touch with you? Fine, that's just the way it should be. Well, aren't you my friend? Sure, sure, I'm your friend. But you can't come high tail to me all the time like I was Graham. But you got to grow up, Spence. And stand on your own two feet. You know, Spence, there's so many wonderful things going to happen to you if you just have the patience to, to wait for. Spence, you know something? Did it ever occur to you that if you weren't black, you'd never have known your grandmother? <coughs> so long, sugar. <laughs> Well, you boys uh, boning up on the midterms at school? Oh, yeah. And I know somebody better bone up on his algebra or isn't going to get his diploma. Me? Bone up on algebra? What am I, a Russian? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are things at the bank, Mr. Scott? Oh, well, uh, uh, we're keeping busy. <laughs> busy, <clears throat> yes, indeed. Hi, Spence. Hi, Spence. Hey, Spence. how are you, boy? I told your folks how sorry we were to hear about your grandmother, Spence. Yeah, I used to get a kick out of old Mrs. Scott. Martin, you goon. Her name was Martin. I'm sorry I meant Martin. Look, fellas, I, I, I hate to say this, but, uh, well, this is sort of a farewell party. I'm going to college this fall. Got to turn over a new leaf. Hit the books real hard, man. Not too much time for socializing, if you know what I mean. Yeah, sure. You know, I guess it wouldn't hurt the rest of us to hit the books a little either, you know? Wouldn't hurt you, maybe. Would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the table set up in the backyard, boys. Cake and ice cream are all ready. Yeah, fellas, go ahead. I'll change my shirt in your honor. Lead me to that Last one out to the umpire. Spence? Yeah, Alan? Are you really going to college? Well, I hope so, man. <laughs> Which one? Well, I was thinking about state, if I get the marks. Really? I I've been thinking about going to state, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, perhaps we could be eggheads together. Yeah, it sounds good, Alan. We'll talk about it, man.
You know, Pop, I guess you don't have to be colored to be unhappy. No, but it sure helps. <laughs> you ought to be on television, Pop. You ought to be down at that bank. No, you had me worried there for a moment. I thought perhaps you might lace into the boys. <laughs> oh, mate. Son. Okay, Pop. See ya. Don't you see what I did, Mom? I said goodbye to them before they said it to me. But they're your friends, Vance. They really yeah, are. I, I know, Mom. I know they're my friends, up to a point. We go to school together, play ball. And after that? Oh, Spence. Don't worry, Mom. I, I can't let that throw me now, Mom. I got a lot of living to do. A lot of living. I gotta live so, so people can respect me, Mom. So I can respect myself. Like Graham always said. I don't know if you did the right thing, Spence. I don't know if I've been wrong all along. What I do know is all I have ever wanted is for you to be happy. I can't honestly find anything wrong with that, Mom. Well, I better go change my shirt. Spence. Yes, Mom. I love you very much. I love you too, Mom. <laughs> 